How can you import Excel data straight into SQL Server? In this video, we're going to have a look at a couple of ways. Hello, my name is Philip Burton from SQL Server 101.com. So we've got here some data. So you can see we've got an employee number, which is a whole number. We've got first name, last name, and middle name. Middle name can be nullable. In other words, it doesn't need to be a value for every single row. We've also got government ID, a date of birth, and a department. So how can we get this into SQL Server? Well, there are two ways. The first way requires us to have this not in spreadsheet form, but as a flat file. So a CSV, comma separated values, or a text file. So to do that, I'm going to go to File, Save As, Browse, and I'm now going to change this so that it is a comma separated value file. And I'm just going to add CSV to the end of the file name. So I click Save. Now this does not support workbooks which contain multiple sheets, that's absolutely fine. I've left some additional sheets in here so you can see these sorts of messages. So let me close this now. And we go into SQL Server and I'm going to right and click on the database that I want to insert this table into and I go to tasks and import flat file. So remember, you must right and click on the database. Don't right and click, for instance, on the tables. You won't get that same array of options. So let's go into import flat file. So this takes me down a very nicely done wizard. So let's click next. We need to specify the input file. So I'm going to click browse and there is my CSV. So you can see I have actually added CSV to the file name, but this is the only time you can do in this particular dialog box, CSVs or text. So next, I can preview the data. So that shows the first 50 rows. Click on to next, and now we can modify the columns. So you can see it has got some suggested data types. Now, these are a bit overblown. NVAR char. So that means I can use the entire array of characters. It did not have to be Western European in basic. So I could be using Japanese characters, Chinese characters, Korean characters. So quite frankly, this is a bit too much. Also, it's given me a default of 50, which I don't mind so much, to be honest. So you might want to change this from an NVAR char to a VAR char, for example. But I'm just going to leave these defaults as is. You might also want to set up a primary key. So that is something that can't be null. So it's got to be present in every single row and uniquely defines that row. So the employee number is different on every single row. So let's click next. So here we can see a summary of what I'm going to do. Click finish. And there we are, it is inserted. Now this was fairly quick for this particular database and table because it wasn't that big. It may take a few seconds. So let's just have a look. Select star from, and we can see the table here, data to import CSV. If you can't see that particular table, you might need to refresh it. I've also got the squiggly underlines, so I need my IntelliSense to be updated and I can do that by holding down Control, Shift and R. That will get rid of the squiggly underline. So let's execute that, and there we can see my data. Now, what if I didn't want to export it into a CSV? What if I wanted to use an actual Excel spreadsheet? Well, we can do that as well. But this time, in instead of going to tasks, import flat file, we import data. Now, this is a more complicated dialog box. This is a cut down SSIS, SQL Server, integration services task. So what I'm going to do here, have my data source. Well, my data source is a Microsoft Excel data source. Make sure we've got the Excel version. To be honest, it doesn't really matter as long as you've got before 2007 or after 2007. So I'm going to say Excel 2016, even though Excel 2019 is available, it's not included in this. So it doesn't matter too much. I'm going to keep to Excel 2016. Click Browse, and there is my non-CSV data. So you can use XLS, XLSX, 
XLSM and XLSB. So click open. And now my destination, well, my destination is my SQL Server database. So I'm going to scroll down to the very bottom, the SQL Server native client 11, and set the server name. Server name is dot in my case, or localhost. And authentication, I'm going to be using Windows authentication. It's exactly the same way as you've got if you were connecting to your server. And then which database are you going to connect to? Well, I'm using the EventWorks 2014 database. So I can write a query to specify the data transfer or I can just transfer the lot. So I'm going to transfer the lot, copy data from one or more tables in, or views. And you can see that it's given me the table name based on the spreadsheet name and then a dollar sign. So you might also see any tables that you've set up in your Excel workbook. So I'm going to select sheet one and it's giving me a destination of dbo.sheet1 dollar. I'm going to leave it at that. Now, if I click on edit mappings, so this gives me a similar type of dialog box that we've seen before. It's going to tell me what exactly it's going to use as the data type. Again, it's gone overboard, but even more so this time. So for instance, it's using a float as opposed to an int. It's using nvarchar 255, and it's saying that all of them are nullable. However, what I do usually is I accept all of these basic types, I import the data, and then I'll refine it from inside SQL Server. So let's click OK. Let's click Next. So I can run immediately. I can also save it as an SSIS package. As I said, this is a cut down version of SSIS. So let's finish. And here you can see it's going through all of the steps. And once it's done, click OK. Now I do find that there are often problems with doing it this way. And so then I really do have to investigate what's going on. My general rule is if I'm importing data, I don't import it into an existing table. That usually causes a lot of problems. I import it into a new table and then I can import it from one table to another. Use the select star into command. So let's have a look at this new table. So again, I'm going to have to press refresh. It may not be there. There it is instantly. So I've got it now. So here it is. And then I can do other things like, for instance, I can alter this table and alter my particular column. So employee number to make it an int, for instance. So I just need to add the word column to the front. Also, I'm going to press Control Shift and R just to allow for all these squiggly lines to disappear. Click Execute. There it is. Click Refresh on the columns. We now have Int, and then they can go through each one of these in turn. So I hope you enjoyed this video. There are other ways of importing data into SQL Server, like using the BCP utility, but this is probably one of the easiest ways. Just right and click and go to tasks and import flat file or import data to import it into a particular database. And this particular video incidentally was a suggestion of that was put on a comment of a previous video that I've got. So if you've got any suggestions for future videos, please put them in the comments to this particular video. If you did like it, why not click the like button and then click on the subscribe and click the bell next to it. That way you will be informed of any new videos. Well, thank you very much for watching this and I'll see you in the next video. Keep learning.